we're like, oh my god, I can't believe you're, you're killing the hogs. If you don't kill the hogs, and if you're a vegetarian, they're just gonna root up and eat all your vegetables, or you ain't got no damn food. Damn food. <laughs> Yeah. That's a yeah. Woo! Caught hog. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh we're gonna we're coming to you with another podcast for a uh, Hog Hunter podcast with Wavoka Tommy. And I am your host, Wavoka Tommy. And a little quick shout out to our sponsors, TBC, the best camo.com. Also, we got Big Country Hunting Supply. You can look them up on Facebook. It, it can offer you a bunch of uh, different products for uh, dog hunters. Also, we got Hog Hunters Association. That's a that's a website on on uh, on Facebook that that we partnered up with. And also, we got Straight Catch. And um, tonight, our guest is uh, Mike Ashmead out of Lakeland, Florida. Go ahead, Mike. Give us a little rundown about you, man. All right. Well, uh, I don't know how to do this too much. We uh, forty seven years old. Been hog hunting probably. Uh, since I was 18 or so, so uh, full-time Ooh. plumber, own a plumbing company, um, nothing special, just uh, just a regular old dude that likes the woods. Damn for man. That, hey, that's that's all it's about, man. I mean, that, you know, that's that's what we made this uh, podcast for. You know, sometimes it's just ordinary Joe that's making a nine to five and like to drop the tailgate on the weekends, or or even with some of these big big production guys. But uh, yeah, man. I mean. I'm, I'm about the age as you too, man. I'm, I'm I'm 45. I just turned 45, so. Yeah. But I'm I'm pretty much way, you know. I try to drive dogs when I can. You said you yeah. started when you were 18. Do that. I'm sorry, broke up. You said you started when you was 18. Yeah. So um, I, yeah. I didn't I didn't get into hunting until I had some guys take me. Now my dad was a fisherman, so he he had never been hunting. Um, I always seemed to like it uh, as a little kid, you know, with BB guns and stuff like that, but. Uh, right. my, first, my first real hunting experience, I had some guys take me um, squirrel hunting. Um, so I got to watch act with dogs. So that was my first okay. experience with dogs and actually hunting. And man, man, that just changed. That just changed everything. Watching them dogs, seeing a dog, tree a squirrel, trying to figure out where that squirrel is and just watching the dogs work. Man, that was just amazing to me. So from right then I was sold on, you know, hunting with dogs. It was just, it was just my thing right then. I hear you, man. I hear you. That that's 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 a uh, uh, that's getting them hooks in on you, man. <laughs> man, kid, I couldn't I couldn't believe a dog could tell me that that squirrel was in that tree, and you know we to try to find that thing in a hundred foot tree. It seemed like you know the squirrel. Yeah. Was small. So, but yeah. he was there. If that dog was barking, that squirrel was up there. It was pretty amazing. That was, that that set me <laughs> off, man. So, so you, so you got a, uh, you got a love for the working dogs, huh? Man, I tell you, I love to watch a dog. It doesn't matter, you know, what they're working. I like to watch other people's dogs work. I like to watch them. I've been coon hunting with some dudes. You know, I don't know what, I don't know how I fell into the hog hunting thing so hard where we're only hunting hogs, but I had run, uh, one of my buddies getting out of high school had some hounds. They like to uh, run deer. So he, we, I ran some deer with them guys with the hounds. And then when I started working full time, after graduating, my boss had hounds, um, and he he was a hog hunter with hounds. And a couple of my buddies liked to hog hunt with cur dogs, so uh, yeah. I think that's where the where the, the hogs came into play at, because um, that was what I really liked to do. After we, you know, if you get in there and wrestle a hog, it was pretty daggum fun to me. Yeah, for uh, yeah, I, I, I can appreciate that. Uh, that's that's a uh, that's how I am. Yeah, I like. I like watching any kind of dog work or working dog. You know what I mean? That's, yep. that's I was raised, you know, a, a dog is a, you know, it, it, it's part of the family, but also at the same time, it's, it's a, like a, a tool in your toolbox, I guess. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I even like watching them uh, like on TV where they, they work them uh, sheep dogs where they're like on oh, the hill. Man, you ain't kidding. Working seeing, doing hand, hand signals and all. Yeah. 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 Left, right, sit, go, push them, pull them. I mean, I, that's something to see, man. It's something to yeah. see. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because they got them dogs running around out there, like 
almost, I mean, I guess they're like a mile out, three quarters of a mile out, and they're just controlling them with a whistle. Yep. And yep. Word, man, yeah. that, that, that takes some work, man. Man, it takes some training, too. Some dogs, some of them dogs are just super smart, man. It, it just, okay. They really impress you. They'll really impress you. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's, that's another thing, too. I mean, people always talking about, you know, this breed and that breed and this breed and that breed and, Man, I'm I'm just to the point to where I, I I agree with the term, you know, a good dog is where you find it, you know? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I've seen plenty of things that most people will call trash and they'd be real good dogs. Yep. <laughs> right. Yep. So so how was your um give give us a rundown on your um your first uh hog hunt with your dogs, man? Well, yeah, so my first dog, let me see if I can try to remember that. I went, I went quite a bit with them guys before I actually owned my own dog, you know, um, uh, being with my parents in a city style and they didn't like animals and dogs and having a bunch of, it was kind of tough for me to get a bunch of dogs until I was, you know, uh, able to move out. Um, I'm trying to remember though, this guys, these guys took me from Mulberry, some of these guys and took me down. <laughs> it's going to be kind of funny because my very first experience with those guys, we were trespassing. <laughs> um, into some mosaic stuff, and I think they were playing games with me. They went out there and they were writing in the dirt, you know, stuff at the security guards. Before long, we had guys shining lights for us, and I was scared out of my bag of mind. Uh, needless to say, we didn't catch any hogs that night. But uh, so going, um, having my own hog dog, I think, uh, trying to remember if, uh, if I wasn't going up to North Florida with those guys running the hounds and just used the cur dog to help you know, go in there and catch a hog or yeah. uh, if I own my, when I own my own first, that's kind of hard, hard one there, man. Try to remember my first dog and my first hog hunt of my own. Yeah. I don't remember the first one of my own, man. Yeah. Most of the time I was with a bunch of guys in the beginning. It's been, it's been a day or two, huh? Oh man. Yeah. 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 My <laughs> mind don't work the same as it used to. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. I don't think I can necessarily remember my first run either, but man, I remember getting hooked though. Oh yeah, I remember getting hooked. So, so what was it that that oh uh, for you? You got in on a big hog and and flipped them on the side or what? Shoot, let's see. Um, riding with them boys. Who's the first guy that ever took me? Well, them guys, those young guys took me hog hogging first. We didn't get any hogs that night that they were messing around with me. I don't think we caught any hogs. So I think my first real hog hunting um like catching a hog and all would have been with my first boss man and he had a place in north lakeland we could go to he liked the hounds so even there it was like a ten thousand acre ranch so it wasn't small but we yeah. were able to, we were able to run hogs uh run the hounds out there um i don't remember the first hog you know but you know being able to get in there and catch them you know these guys are you know here, here i am thinking we're gonna kill something you know you go and then they're catching the hogs live you know <laughs> which is what we all do now but you know, when you first go at the very first time, it's a little, a little freak, freaks you out a little bit. Yeah, man. Go in there, grab them. They got to tell you how to hold it, you know, because it can be a little dangerous <laughs> if you're new and you know, you're green at it and you don't know what you're doing. So, yeah, but that was it. Wrestling, getting in there and getting exciting with the dogs and actually getting to help work with them. Yeah, I was hooked right then. Yeah, man. I, I hear you. I hear you. The, um, the hounds. Is, is that what you like to run or, or what no, no, type? No, no, I like the cur dogs much better. I don't like an open mouth dog. You know, with, with me, I don't mind going with those guys. I haven't been in many years. It used to be fun cutting the blocks, using the CBs, yeah. chasing them, using the trucks. But I like to walk mainly, you know, myself. Okay. I, I don't mind walking uh, even still at this. I just can't run like I used to, but I don't mind walking. I can walk for quite a while. I, I like to walk behind a silent mouth dog. I like a more grittier you know, dog that's going to get in there and get some action going right away rather than chase them for four hours or five hours. <laughs> you know, so. But it was, it, you know, it, it, it's each to each to their own. Some guys really yeah. like that, you know, and um, I don't mind the, the hound hunting. I just don't want to own one myself, you know, that's yeah. as far as that goes. Yeah. I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, yeah. But a uh, buddy of mine that we go run with all the time, he's got, he's got a couple of uh, jam up plot hounds, but yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's like, it's like that first bark is that that starting gun at the Olympics, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. That first bark, man, they're, they're gone. You know. Yep. Yep. Sometimes it might be 
45 minute race and sometimes probably four or five hour race. That's right. You know? <laughs> yep, I've seen them go all. I've seen them go all day long. You wouldn't think a hog would run that far. That you know, that long. <laughs> I have seen them run a hog for six, seven, eight hours, man. Yes, sir. Yep. I've seen I've seen it happen in the daytime, like this time of the year, and it's like oh, yeah. it's crazy. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah, the hounds, them hounds are pretty good. I mean, you know, a hound can run even in the heat, man. I, you'd be surprised. Some of them dogs can really get down, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's uh, that's 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 how um, that's how uh, my last good dog, uh, he got killed uh, not this past uh, New Year's, but last New Year's, uh, twenty. We went out, and man, he was getting good, man. He was getting good, but the thing was, is that he was too greedy. Yeah, he would he would he would hit a bad hog, and if it whooped him up pretty bad, and you heard him barking, then you know it was it was you know yeah he he did, yeah time to send uh, a catch dog in yeah yes sir yeah you knew he was he was looking at a good one yeah and um that New Year's Day on 2020 man he he went out and uh we just got out there man we just got out there dropped the dogs out so they can you know shit piss whatever else and man next thing you know he. He's cutting out, nose down, tail curled up. Uh, see, he's 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 on one, man. Next thing you know, there's like three or four other dogs cutting out behind him. And man, it it was uh, it turned into a four hour race, man. With uh, a curl, huh? Uh, leopard. Oh leopard. yeah, yeah. And um, it was four hours. This time of the year, I mean, like I said, it was New Year's, but it, it was it was on the warmer side. And uh, he run that hog four hours and probably almost eight miles. And it, it was just kind of like circling yeah. around, circling yeah. around. And um, what 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 uh, what made it worse was that the property that he came through, he was almost out the bottom end of it, like the southwest side of it. And we got there, and then all of a sudden the hog turned around and cut out northeast. And when he cut back northeast, that was property that we couldn't get in. But we knew we could get around, so we had to drive about two miles around to, to get back to the other side where he was at, and he was showing up tree. And by the time we got there, he cut down, man. Oh, man. Yeah, he was just he cut down. I ended up losing him. We we tried to save him, but... That's yeah. probably part of, the, part of the game. Unfortunately, with the hog hunting, that's definitely yes, part of the game. Yes, sir. But it, it, it's it's crazy how them hogs just keep running like that, because yeah. it was it was warmer. It was a warmer day, you know. Yep, yep, yeah. They'd be, you'd be surprised at how far. Some people would be surprised if they haven't seen a dog stick with one to how far a hog can really go if, and how long he can go if, you know, if he feels pressure and doesn't want to stop. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. Um, the buddy I'm talking about with the uh, with the plots, he had he had um, they went out on a race, and uh, that hog went out five miles and come back in five miles. Yeah, and when he come back in. He crossed the road a hundred yards in front of my uh, friend's uh, van. He he's got a uh, he's got a van that he's got uh, big tires on. And that's what he. <laughs> oh, that's it, cool, those man. old Ford vans, like a like a work van type. Well, they, you know? yeah, they, yeah, they used to have them four wheel drive and all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, his is two wheel, but he's got it set up like a Hot Wheels, man. <laughs> ah, the big tires in the back. Yeah. <laughs> well, this day he ended up getting stuck, man. But I've seen that van go through some stuff, man. And um, they ended up getting stuck that day, and, and that hog went out five miles. And when it come back in the five miles, it crossed the road about a hundred yards in front of them. It yeah. crossed, and they seen it, and like within about maybe five to ten seconds, here come his dog coming across the road, and they were able to call him off at that time. When when they get when they get that far in that race, they when they start to slow down, you could call his dogs off, but that first couple miles or so, no, oh, yeah, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> I know that feeling too. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's hard to get a dog call. You know, smart enough to call one off. You gotta, you gotta have a good handle on them. Uh, yeah, hunt them, hunt them a bunch to be able to do something like that for sure. Yeah, man. So you were saying that uh, you you came from like the uh, city lifestyle into it, huh? Yeah, yeah. So you know, my, like I said, he was a fisherman, so we weren't very country here. They both worked at the uh post office so um my mom grew up on a farm uh in massachusetts so she was a farm girl i think i get my outdoor stuff from her but, okay but you know as an adult they were not they were pretty city so 
Um, they didn't like me bringing all them dogs home and I made <laughs> dog pets out the back and all, but I, you know, I was by then, by the time I got into the dogs, I was 17, 18, 19, and I was out of school and paying my own, you know, paying for my own stuff. So, um, until I moved out, they, I was allowed to have a couple, but I didn't have more than two or three at the house with them. Shoot. I don't right. know. I mean, I got a litter of puppies, but last, I, I just, um, got, got rid of a few that weren't going to make the cut. Um, and I was up to 11 or 12. I got, uh, I might got 10 out there right now. So, all right. Yeah. I like to keep a few. One yeah. bad day, one bad day, like like what you're talking about, what a bad cutting or a bad deal, man. You you could be out of the business if you don't have some backup, for sure. Yes, yes sir. That's the truth right there. That, that's, that's about like I am right now. I only got, mm, I got two that I can say that are that are solid enough that I I know they'll, they'll get something done. Mm -hmm. But um, I got another two coming up behind them that are doing all right. But I only got one good catch dog. And, uh, I, I I got another one coming up behind her, but he he's he's gonna take a minute to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear you loud and clear there, man. It's it's like once that once that main dog's gone, it's like running blind. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you've got to keep a few. So I got some I got some young dogs under a year. Got uh, ones about a year and a half. A couple that are older, you know, that we've been hunting with. Um, and then I just I have. Uh, I'm going to keep, I think, three out of this litter right now. I'm going to keep for a little bit. Then they're only seven weeks old right now. So I try to keep them in stages. So as they're getting older and yep. one's, one's in its prime, it starts coming out and I got something behind there. Yep. But it, I'm going to tell you, it's not it's not like it used to be. It used to be easier to find better dogs. So even with mm -hmm. my own breeding, I've got some out here that have, we've been, you know, the same blood since, since I started, you know, some of them. Um, yeah. And we got, I was out of it and I was able to get a few dogs to breed that some guys had some dogs of our old ones. So I got some of the blood back in the yard and we've really been, me and a couple of the guys that I hunt with have been trying to keep that blood uh, right. going, but adding some new stuff in there, trying to make a little bit better dog, you know, yeah. uh, they just seem like there was better dogs. It was easier to find better dogs uh, years ago than it is now. There's been so much watered down, so many wannabe guys bringing in this and breeding whatever they got. They like, like for colors and for looks mm -hmm. and, yep. you know, then all of a sudden you don't have the same working dogs that you used to have. Yeah. You don't have the integrity anymore. Nope. Nope. Yeah. I completely understand that. And that, that that's something I got into later. That um, You know, back then I was just young and dumb, you know, just running what I found, you know. I mean, oh, yeah. Seven, whatever, you know. And, and, I, and I, better. Yeah. Yeah. And I never really studied up on any of like you know the breeding, the line breeding, or nothing like that until recently. But now, thinking, now that thinking. I, yeah, when you can't find a dog anymore, you start thinking about all that stuff. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah a little different. When we were young, they were easy to come by. You don't think, man, I need to, I need to keep some of these. I need to breed some of these. You know, we didn't want puppies. We wanted to hunt, hunt all the time, and didn't yeah. want to have to pay for extra food and extra puppies. And now, <laughs> now you know, you got to have some, you know, some up and comers, or you're going to be. Out of luck, yeah. one bad day, yep. dude. I'm telling you. Yep, you'll be one of these guys that's on the on the page looking for a finished dog. You know? <laughs> that's right, <laughs> offering all kinds of money for it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Man, they don't sell nothing Man, I, either on them pages either anymore either. Nah, nah, nah. It, it's it. I see that it's still kind of like um like back then when we were running in our prime. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't think I'm too much far out of my prime, but if you ask my old lady, she'll probably tell you otherwise, but <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that one. Yeah. But uh, you know, it, it, I, I still kind of see it as to like you gotta know some good solid people, you know what I mean? To, to find those good solid dogs, and then every once in a while somebody would, you know, drop a decent one on you and yep. the guy yep. just drop it on you because he knows that you hunt a lot and that you know he knows you work your dogs and, and he just might say, you know, I just wanna puppy back one day when you breed her or if he gives you a mail then he's probably like you know if if he turns out how he should then i want you know to bring him back by so i breed him to a bitch i got in the yard or something you know yeah I, no, I, I like it better when you give one to a friend or something rather than to try to sell one it just makes the deal much better and yeah lo love helping them guys out you know speaking of that you, big chris uh christopher scott you know a couple I don't know, maybe 
year and a half ago or so. He only had two grown dogs, and he had a couple young dogs. He lost both those grown dogs in one morning, one on a hog, and one got ate by a gator. So I gave him a dog. I gave him a dog that day or that week, the next weekend, because I didn't want him to stop hunting. Me and him were doing a lot of hunting together. Yeah. And, uh, and he was a very good guy, very good friend. And so I gave him a nice dog, at least what I thought was a nice dog, started dog, um, which he, he really likes. It's his main dog right now. And I've gave him a few other dogs that I thought were decent dogs, you know, uh, along the way. I can't keep them all. If somebody, I've had, I've had luck, Thighs giving me a couple dogs. You know, a couple of them guys, a couple of them other guys have offered me puppies and offered a dog or two to try to add to the mix. Um, but I'm, I'm like that. I don't want to give one away. And I feel like if you've got a group of guys that you're hunting with, you can keep the dogs around or you want to keep him in the game. Give him something, yeah. you know, give him something you think is going to be a good. Don't give him, you know, some piece of crap, but you give him a good dog and they'll stay in the game. And then they help you out with the breeding and, yeah. the, you know, the, the giving of the puppies just like that. Yeah. 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 I feel like that. Yeah. yeah. That, that's the, that's that um that's that good honorable handshake type of deal you know that's right that's right there ain't much of that anymore either no you don't get that no these young kids don't have this yeah we're losing everything about the old the good old days is going down the drain bubba yeah for sure yeah. i i call it the uh close the gate behind you respect that's, that's right. right right that's right without asking you know you open it you got to close it that's right yeah 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 yep. yeah. yeah that's the um Kind of like what, what you said just now, um, probably three, four months ago, we was out there running uh, running out there in Brighton, and um, we was running in the sugar cane. And uh, where we was at, uh, it was like one of those little, like a little reservoir inside the uh, the cane fields. And um, we had the dogs in there. Uh, my friend with the plots, he, he, he dropped his plots in there. Um, I just had a pup that I had only took out. Man, this, this pup is coming along good, man. I had only took him out. This was his fourth time going out. And he trailed one up for us. We busted up a pack and we caught one out of there. But he didn't go with the pack. He stuck his nose down and went uh, with the pack where the pack of hogs had went. I didn't know that. I We were out there about 300 yards into the next property, tying the hog, bringing it back. And I look at the garment and I see he's like three, 400 yards up. And then I'm like, did y'all see Max? They're like, oh, he came by with his nose down. Sure enough, he went behind the pack. He found him out there in the, in the, in the cane field. So anyway, fast forward a little bit. Um, he ended up losing him, but my friend had his plots. He dropped the plots in there, so the plots are pushing now. And um, they they started they started moving across the block. So I started trying to get up ahead to try to cut them off on the next crossing. And, and when I did, that reservoir where we was at, the, the grass was probably like two, three feet high. And it was a narrow road. And as I'm cruising through there, I feel the truck kind of do this. I'm like, shit. Oh, man. What was that? And uh, my stepson looks out the window, and he said, it's one of the black dogs. I was like, one of the black dogs? Because I had made sure the two dogs we had on the ground was next to me on, on, on my side. And I knew right. where they were. But what happened was one of my friend's dogs had came through the cane where we was at, and she come right out in front of the tire. And I, yep. I didn't even, you know? I because she was coming along good too. He had he had been working her probably good four or five months, and and she, man, she was she was turning on pretty good, man. Man, I felt so bad about it, man. and uh, you know we dug a little hole and and uh you know gave her a little burial right there in, in the cane field. Man, I felt bad about it, man. So, I don't know. About two weeks ago, uh, I had to make a decision, and I had to come off some of my dogs because I'm. I, I got something else going on. I had to bring in some other types of dogs. So with that being said, I had to make some decisions. And I had uh, three started dogs that I've been working. And they, they were starting to figure it out a little bit. They they weren't they weren't um uh, they weren't looking like all stars or anything like that. But I mean, they they were starting to figure it out, you know. And um, I called them up and I said, "Hey, man." I said, uh, hey, Luce, I said, come by the house, man. I said, I got dogs over there. Come by and pick them up. And I told him which dogs. And then I said, I got this other dog, too, that was given to me for free. Um, I said, she hasn't seen anything. She hasn't started on anything. I said, you can take her, too. So he took those three starter dogs in that, in that one. Uh, it's a running walker. And um, he took that one, too. And um, two of those uh, three starter dogs that I, I gave him, he took them out the other night. And he was telling me about it. 
uh, one of them I called Jiggy. He said, man, Jiggy ran down that and seen that hog come across the road. And, he, man, he said he ran it down, stopped it. And as soon as he stopped it, he was paying it. And then he said, I let I let the catch dog go. And he said, as soon as that catch dog hit, boom, he jumped in there and hit it with him. And I said, damn. <laughs> I like didn't it. even see nothing like that out of that pup yet, man. <laughs> oh, that's good, though. That's good. You know, because of the act from one accident to a good deal. A good yeah. deal for him, yep. Yeah. And then there was another one that uh, she looked like a little red uh, cur dog. I don't know what she is. She was just the Heinz 57 that that uh, 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 another hog hunter had given me. And um, I liked the way she worked. Every time I took her out, I took her out maybe six or seven times. And she'd stay busy, man. I mean, she never stopped. She's just one of them ones that's, you know, if you're casting her out in front of the truck, you know, she's going to stay out there about 50 yards in front of the truck, just checking out everything, just beating the bush. Good. He told me, he had her out there, and you know how when they cut down the, the cane fields, you got big open blocks and stuff like yep. that? He said she'd stay out there at the edge of the next block and, and work that whole block or come across to the other side and work the other block. And then they uh then they jumped one. She she went in, jumped one, and that hog come out, and it was coming across the, the, the cut field. Mm-hmm. And she caught up behind it, and she hit that uh, bull hog's nut sack, sat him down, and then started barking and banging him. I Damn. said, what? <laughs> Damn. Good show. Good show. I love it, yeah. man. I love yeah. one, I love to see a new one start doing her thing too, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heck. So I'm over here on one side. I'm envious. I'm full, I'm full with envy. I good up and coming dog, you know. <laughs> I know. I know. Hey, it'll it, it's a good thing though. It'll come back on you good one yeah. day for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, he, he he's one of my best friends that I hunt with all the time. So, you know, I, the dog ain't far, you know. If it gets yep. put, I, I hope to get a good pup out of it, like he was talking about, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't don't think I haven't felt bad sometimes, too. I go with Chris <laughs> and see how good the dog's doing. I'm like, man, dad, come I gave that dog away. I can't believe it, you know. But, but it's a good thing. It kept him in the game and me and him yep. had to go and hang out, man. I really like hanging out with him. Yeah. So yep. it makes for a good deal. <clears throat> what's the um, what's the biggest hog you ever got, man? Uh, I helped catch a hog in Georgia that they wanted to bar, and it was a boar hog lit, and it was in the, my buddy's pasture, and it was staying with the cows. And we had a lease across the street. He wanted to catch the hog and put it in the barn for the hunting season. He was afraid somebody was going to shoot it. Um, okay. So we we uh, we took a couple dogs out there, caught it. Had to put it in the front end loader to bring it in there and cut it, and we we blocked it up in the barn during hunting season. Nobody could shot it, but I I would have to say, you know, them Georgia hogs are much bigger than what we have down here, and mm-hmm. um, I would have to think that uh, he was. I know when they 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 caught him again later, he killed a horse there, uh, and so my he killed one of my buddy's horses. Um, cut her stomach open they were fighting over who was going to get in the barn one day when it snowed up there it's kind of weird i took my wife up there to see the snow and i went, me and her got up early in the morning went to walk down the road and i saw the horse flopping around over there. i'm like man what's going on i went to walk over there and i told her i said don't come over here you know i could see what was going on i went in the house to get get my buddy to let him know he got the gun and by the time he went out there the horse had already died really within just a few minutes and i seen the hog walking out um, so that after that we ended up catching him. but he was already barred in he was over 400 pounds when he was a bar and he had to be between 350 and 400 when he was a boar hog. Uh, it would, that would have been the biggest. Uh, you know, in Florida, maybe close to 300 pounds, you know, is a big, big hog here. But yeah. that yeah. would have been my that would have been the biggest hog I ever touched. I mean, he was massive and super strong. And I don't know if you know any of them guys from Georgia, but they just caught last week um, uh, John, uh, Rake Straw and, and – uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Will Booth. They caught one and weighed him with intact with nuts, 440 pounds. The biggest hog they've ever caught. And them guys catch, them guys catch a ton of hogs every year. Um, they got a new place to hunt, look like some cornfields or something. And uh, man, they caught that thing last week and they got it hanging up in pictures of it on Facebook with the scale and all. I mean, he's massive. So those hogs are much bigger up there. When when you see an average large 200 pound hog here. They're usually average 300 there in, in Georgia. If you're around some planted fields and stuff, um, yeah. so that would be my big. That would be my biggest hog, man. He was between 350 and 400. I didn't have a scale, but he was he was a giant. Yeah, it was very very hard to hold him and tie him. We've got a 
a bucket, you know, front end loader on a tractor to pick him up and take him to the barn. I mean, you, we couldn't pick him up, put him on a tailgate. He was huge. That's that's a hog, man. That's a hog. And, and mean, and mean, man. He went through some dogs out there too. I he, bet he was bad. I bet. He and they were that's a hog right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was he was very big. But I, you know, down here, I wouldn't say I've caught anything that big in Florida. Maybe yeah. maybe a little over three hundred on a bar hog, like a giant, you know. Yeah. A real giant for down here, but he would have been a bar hog. No, no boar hog over 300 pounds in Florida have I caught. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen some pretty good size ones before, but most of them that, that I would say probably 275 at the yeah. most. You know, that's a, big, that's a big hog, man, for around yeah. here. Yeah. Maybe. May. Hotter, the hotter it gets, like further down where y'all are at, even though there's sugar cane, you know, they would think that that would be a, like a, what you call a agriculture field. But really, you know, when you go up to Georgia, they got peanuts, they got soybeans, some soybeans, and now yeah. they're starting to plant corn and stuff. So the hogs are just, just bigger where they can eat. Plus it's a cooler. I know it does get warm during the summer, but it's so hot down here. It's just like the deer, everything's smaller the further yeah. south you go. So yeah. Yeah, big hogs, two hundred fifty pounds for sure. That's a big hog. I would, um, uh, buddy and common friend, uh, Tyrod. Yeah. Um, unfortunate what happened with him. Rest in peace. Um, I had just, I had seen him around growing up. You know what I mean? From when I was a young guy, I, I had always seen him. He, he was a few years older than me, but. Um, I had never like hung out with him like hunting or anything like that until recently, just before he passed away, like within a month before he passed away. Mm. And we got to run with him three or four times. And um one of those nights we went out there with him. Man, I I, I, I swear to God, because I I've the biggest the biggest bar that we caught, I'm and I'm just uh guesstimating. But he was like 350, 360. I mean, he was huge. Yeah. And I was to load him up in the back of the truck. That's how big he was. Yeah. And um, I remember that hog. And that hog we seen that night, he was bigger than him. Yeah. So he, he, he was, he was telling me. I think he told me he saw that with, when he was with y'all. And yeah. He had, he had been telling me there's one out there that's a daggum giant. They just, yeah. you know, have dogs on them they see them and they try to dump out they end up catching something else all the time i i wear i wear an extra large glove and i put my hand down there on his hoof and i mean they, his hoof was as big as my hand man the yeah. print, the hoof print. he was big man he was big i would guess 400 i mean i told thyroid that night i said man i said i would bet he's 400 all day man <laughs> that that was huge but what was crazy was that we're sitting on one of those little cross ditches and we're on the side where the fields cut down, and uh, my my little red dog that I got, he's got his nose down. He's he's working it, working it, working it, and he keeps going to the ditch and looking to the other side, but he don't ever go across. And then he keeps working the track, working the track, and the next thing you know, he takes off and he goes probably two hundred yards to the, to the uh, crossing. It was like one hundred seventy five yards. He goes to the crossing, and he crossed over, and he's coming back along the. Along the ditch on the other side. I'm like, well, maybe he picked it up. And um, right as I'm saying that, I cut my headlight off, but I hear something moving. So here I go, I, I cut my headlight back on, and sure enough, like almost directly across is that hog mm -hmm. walking along the cane, walking along the cane. And just as I turned the light on, that's that's uh my dog, like I said, he was working back towards us, but on the other side of the ditch, he's coming up right behind him in that hog. He didn't even look back. I guess he heard my dog coming up behind him. Next thing you know, he just goes crashing through the cane like a damn, <laughs> and like, like a locomotive just running through. I don't know how they run through stuff the way they, the way they do. <laughs> I don't either, man. Like a missile, my, man. My dog tried to go in behind him. He, he couldn't. <laughs> now the dog's man. I don't uh, know. I don't know how they do it. They're like shaped just to run right through the thickest stuff there is and sl slow yeah. the dogs down. Something, man. Something. I guess, I guess it's just that aerodynamics of the head, I, I guess, know. man. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I it's, it's wild, man. Yeah. You ever, have, um, you ever have a close call out there, man? Me? Um, 
No, not 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 like uh, man. I've been with a couple guys that's been cut and, and messed around. I, I think the closest call I probably ever had, um, I was turning one loose, uh, and it was at that lease down there by Brighton. Um, uh-huh. I saw a guy barred him. It was daylight. I I knew he was uh, mean and kind of pissy, and my buddy was standing on the bumper of the buggy. And I went to turn him loose, and I turned around and tried to jump on the buggy, and thank God he was there because I got up on that edge of that bumper, but I was falling backwards, and he was able to oh. grab me, and that hog had spun around. He was just waiting on me. to. Had I fell, I would have fell right on my back because I didn't have my feet underneath me. I would have yeah. landed right on the ground, and I would have been in a real bad position. Um, mm. That was probably my scariest. I had another, I had another time we were um, uh, bait a big bar hog. It was just breaking daylight in the morning, and we went to run in there. And I was telling these, I had some. There were some young kids, not little guys, but green guys. They were probably eighteen or nineteen. I said, "Listen, you know." I looked at my brother, and he was like, "Man, he looks big." So I was telling them guys, "Just hang on. I think this is going to be a great big old hog." Because, like you were talking about that other dog earlier, we had a big old rank dog in there, yeah. and he was barking. And usually, if if he's barking, there's something really bad going on because he yeah. just yeah. anything he wanted. And uh, so he's baying, and we're trying to get in there and take a peek and look over through the palmettos. And that hog broke, ran straight at me, stopped right. He 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 saw the hog coming, I'm assuming, and he caught him right there, right at my legs. And I was like on my tippy toes, going, whoa, 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 kind of locked up. I was like, oh my god! I looked down. I mean, he's got teeth hanging out. He was right there. That first uh. time might be the the two closest calls I ever had to like being cut or being hurt. Um, right. I try to give them the respect they, you know, that they, they uh, do. I know they're, I know people say crazy things about how dangerous the hogs are. You know, if we've handled a bunch of them, so it's not as crazy or scary to us, but I give them the respect. I don't, I don't do stupid stuff around them, you know, Yeah. Um, but had I fell off that bumper that day, he was waiting on me and I, I probably would have been in a bad situation because I would have landed right on my back. Mm. Um, and then I'd had to get up with him right there, you know, what, yeah. You know, no chance of protecting myself. I would have been. I would have been in a bad situation. Damn it, man! <laughs> Makes that hair stand. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I was. I was very thankful that he grabbed me. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've seen some guys get some pretty nasty. You know, cutting in the legs and cutting. You know, mm-hmm. cutting the arm, stuff like that. But most of the time, they're goofing off or they're doing something they're supposed to be doing. You know, or thinking they're tough and they're trying to turn a hog loose out there in the open. No one he's going to turn on you. You know, it's mm-hmm. just. You know, some of them things can be a little, little sketchy, um, yep. but I have, you know, no, no real bad damage to any, anybody other than some, you know, poking and cutting on a leg yeah. or as far as, as far as, I mean, that's, that's the thing though. I mean, some people that are probably going to watch these podcasts, you know, they don't know anything about hog hunting, you know what I mean? And some people yep. don't know these hogs can hurt oh. you Yep. with teeth, without teeth, you know? Oh yeah. Shoot, I've seen them hurt them dogs really bad without ever cutting them. Beat them yeah. ribs in, beat their stomach in. Them dogs, some of them die. Some of them can't get up the next day for a few days. And they're like, man, what's wrong with this dog? I'm like, dude, that thing, I don't know if you've noticed, but sometimes they fly up out of them palmettos. That's because he's getting banged up out of there. If you yeah. can, that hog can throw you or bang a dog and knock him five feet in the air, you can just imagine the concussion or the feel of that brunt force on them rib cage. Yeah. They, have to cut them to really hurt them. They can, yeah. they can really hurt you. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it's like it's like somebody swinging a bat on another oh, person. Yeah. Yep. People it, don't it. understand that, you know. Yeah. And then, and you know, the people that don't hunt whatsoever, you know, they think these hogs are like, you know, something, you know, cute, cuddly little animal, you know. <laughs> oh, you know, this that. Uh. Uh-uh. You, uh-huh. you get on the short end of that stick, man. You are gonna find out real soon. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, man. You so you get some of them in a, you know, you get him tied or you get him in a trailer and you're looking at him. Sometimes that thing will look you in the eye and you can almost see the reasoning in there. I mean, he's he is calculating your moves and everything. I mean, he's super smart, like super yeah. smart. Some of them you can look them dead in the eye and know that how smart he is. And he's not only studying you and the situation, but I imagine you give him the opportunity and he gets you. He gets you. You know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, some of them are just mean. Some of them are just mean, mean, mean. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 what you're saying about that too? You, you see that looking at hogs' eyes? It's like he, he, he you, you, like you said, you can just tell, man. He, oh yeah, he's like, yeah. You can tell. 
give me that one inch. I'm gonna stretch yeah. it out. Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> some of them are hiding in the corner, this, that, and the other. But some of them will give you that look, and you can you, even when you're just tying them and you got him on the ground, you can look down there at him, and he's looking you right in your face. I mean, he is really, really smart and studying you. Yeah, yeah. I, I've had plenty of them, man. I used to hunt this place on 66. Uh, this old man used to own it. He's dead now. His name was Jimmy Smith, and they called it the Two Rock Ranch. Every he wanted, he loved hog hunting. He was super old. He wanted right. a bar every boar hog, bar, bar, bar. You know, don't kill the sows, don't kill my hogs, you know, do what you want, don't don't kill the hogs. And uh, so he would follow us on the four wheeler. If we went in there and caught a hog, he'd pull right up on the four wheeler because old dude, he was like 65, and he'd get yeah. off there, let me cut him, and then he'd drive off on the four wheeler and let you turn the hog loose. Every yeah. single hog on that place, boar hog that you ever caught and cut loose, chased you back to the truck, would run around the truck, bang the tires, bang the bumper. Every single hog there was the weirdest thing. It was just like every one of them were mean as, mean as they could be, man. Mean as they could be. The mean old bastards. Huh? Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, and, they, and, they would, and they didn't like a dog much neither. We've had, we, I didn't hunt that thing but, but for about a year, maybe two years. And I bet you we lost four or five dogs there. I mean, they, they were, they was very rough on a dog too. Yeah, yeah. You can well, run get, into them places every now and then. Get back to these mean hogs banging on the truck and chasing back to the truck. What would you do? Some guy cut your nuts off. Come uh, on. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. I, especially if I had some knives on my mouth, I would probably cut <laughs> for sure. There's no doubt. No doubt about that. I, I feel you on that one. I feel you on that one. Man, they, they, they are some mean ones, though, man, because, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand. It, it's for us. We're going out there, we're hunting, we're catching the hog, you know, we handle them, whatever we do with them, whether we kill them, take them home, eat them, or we bar them out, we let them go. A lot of people don't understand. For us, okay, we're going out there to do that because it's something we love to do, but it's something that's that's a pastime, in, in, in a, in a uh, so to speak. But for that hog, it's life or death. Yeah. That yeah. hog... Oh, anything else? Yeah, all he knows is that it's life or death. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 why that boy looking at you. Give me an inch. I'm gonna stretch yeah. it out of my. Yeah. <laughs> some of, yeah. Some of them understand a little bit better than others. I, I, yeah. I, the way they look at it, they're just smarter. I, that one guy just calls them dragons. He so I got the I got the you know me and my son get to joking like that. I, we want to be the dragon slayer. You know the dragon hunter because that's what he's looking for all the time. Oh, oh the biggest baddest boar hog that's killed four or five dogs and nobody can catch him. That guy's like that's the one I want. You know I want to catch that dragon. I'm like yeah, that's a pretty good pretty good word for it. Yeah, they can they can pretty pretty, pretty rank man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember uh, I remember one time when I was younger, <clears throat> we were out hunting and um. Uh, we had a couple four wheelers out there and a couple trucks where we was at, you know, it's open pastures pretty much, except for like the flag, uh, not flag ponds, but the uh, little marsh and stuff. It's more like a sawgrass area. Um, one of these big hogs that we busted out of, out of, out of the, uh, the sawgrass pond, man, he come out and he's probably a good solid 250. And uh, I'm trying to turn him back. I, I I catch up to him and I'm trying to turn him back with the uh with the four wheeler. Man, he come to that four wheeler, man. He went he went trying. <laughs> he come to that four wheeler and he started boom, boom, boom. And I see some teeth hanging out. So I'm like got my one foot up on the gas tank and trying to drive. <laughs> and I'm hoping that he don't, you know, just come rushing up on top of the four wheeler either, man, which I yep. figured was his next move. So I pulled off of him, man. Yeah, I couldn't even turn him around, man. He is no. like, wait, you know. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I don't. Some people uh, don't under, don't realize either. You know, if you got a boar hog running around out there or coming toward you, and sometimes you may be in the the light on the forward, or like you shine your flashlight at him, they'll turn, come straight at the light. Yeah. You know, so I, I've told guys, you know, you can hear the dogs chasing when he's coming close. They don't have him stop. Don't turn on the light. And they'll turn, they, you know, they're scared. They can hear the hog. So they turn a the light on. Boom. They, the hog runs right at them. And so this is a true story. I know it's kind of weird, but uh, I took, we, we tied one. We went in a grove one night, parked in the grove. So we're in the grove aisles. And my brother just bought this Toyota. So about a week old. We catch a boar hog. We catch a boar hog right there. Like I mean, we had just turned the dogs loose, maybe six aisles over from the truck. Bam! Right there, tied him. We went, made a big loop, walking. Left the truck right there. We walked the grove, walked out the, in the flat behind the grove and stuff. We come back, 
and I had a buddy of mine with me who's kind of green, not been hunting much. He's never turned a hog loose. He said, I want to go and turn the hog loose. And we're like, okay, there was four of us. So my brother went with him and me and Opie went to the truck. We get in the back seat and we're just talking and uh, roll the window down. So uh, we're just sitting and we're parked in an aisle. We can hear them guys over there talking. They're not very far. Yeah. I can hear my brother telling him what to do, you know, on time. We're going to turn him loose. He turns loose. You can just hear them feet in that dirt, right? Opie's, Opie's sitting next to me and decides he wants to just shine a light because he can hear the hog running. Man, that, yeah. hog was running, that hog was coming under them trees right there. And when he shined that light, that hog tried to dive, like jump at the flashlight. Uh. It hit the side of that door on my brother's brand new truck. And Opie ran into me. I swear I thought it was coming in the window. It jumped at the light. It hit the side of that door and just it just caved the entire door in. A pat it was a four door Toyota, it's a back back passenger door. He hadn't, <laughs> he hadn't had it a week. Boom, wow. whole, whole side of the truck in there. And <laughs> I've had them. I've had them in a like you have them in a pen or something. You walk up there, you messing with them, and some of them charge you. I've had some that'll try to jump, like yeah. jump at you and hit the top yeah. of the fence. I mean, yeah. you think, man. If that thing could jump over there, he would probably try to get your ass right there, you know? Yeah. It's yep. kind of crazy. Yeah, some of them can be very, very aggressive, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That is, speaking of that, like what you just said, um, there was a time that uh, we used to trap some out here, too. And um, the fence that we had on there, um, you know those uh, wire panels, that like the two-by-four wire panels? They're, mm -hmm. they're like five foot tall. Yeah. So we made it five foot tall with, with the wire panel. But then on top of that, about another six inches up, we put a two by six across there, which mm -hmm. puts it at roughly six six foot. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't that big at all. I mean, it was probably eight by eight at the most. It was eight by eight because I remember we used uh, two panels and they're like 16 feet. So it was like eight by eight with a you know, ring trap door on there. Mm -hmm. And man, this whole, he, he was ranked. He was ranked. If, if there was ever a fight for a dog, that that would have been it right there. If he was, <laughs> you know, if, if a dog caught him, if they caught him. But man, we weren't, we weren't, but maybe 30 yards away from it, not even up to it yet. If we hear this, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> and sometimes that a bear would get in there, you know, so we're yeah. kind of thinking, there bears in there. So we kind of, you know, edge around the corner around these little, uh, cabbage palms and i look i'm like holy shit man this this whole he's probably a good solid two two twenty and he's just man like like a, uh those uh those games the with the flippers the ping pong oh yeah pinball yeah yeah, yeah the, the, the pinball games that's what it looked like inside that cave man <laughs> <laughs> he wanted out yeah and then finally uh we backed off and when, uh, we went and got a gun and came back because we was like, well, there ain't no way we're going to be able to just drag him out of there, you know? We're going to we're gonna have to shoot him before we drag him out. So we're coming back with a gun, and he sees us, and he does the same thing. He's like, bam, 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 bam. And, man, he he come up over that top, and he he was teetering on the top like this. <laughs> and he what he looked like was like a gorilla that was, like, like about to press himself up over the top. Yeah. But, He's teetering and his foot his foot slipped and he fell back in and we did get him. And man, he had it, he had a shield probably two and a half inches thick. And he was just scarred from head to toe. You could tell that he was just nothing but business. That, yeah. That's all it was, man. Just everyday business. It's always one of them big, smart, old rank ones that'll jump the trap or beat the trap to pieces or chase you. Or you know what I'm saying? They, they just get as they get, they're just as smart as some people. They, he's been uh, learning, learning, learning uh, every year he goes. And he's probably been in a trap before, but I have seen some that'll tear a trap, slap up, or jump out. You got to put a roof on it because they'll yeah. they figure out a way. Or climb it. I've seen them get in the corner and climb and figure out how to climb out of there, almost like, yeah. a, you know, like a dog climbing out of a pen. So yeah. some, of them can be, some of them can be pretty intelligent for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and it goes back to that. It's life or death for them. That's right. Yeah. How, who's got the will to survive? That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Survival of the fittest. Man, I see you got a bunch of buckheads back there, man. Yeah, I got some deer, some turkeys. Oh, okay. We're talking about the big, the big hog. This is my first big hog, and it's got the date on it too. Nineteen ninety-four on that big hog over. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. 
That's the first big hog I ever caught. And uh, yeah, we got some deer heads, some turkeys. Man, hey, you got some big bucks up there, man. Yeah, I got a big turkey right there. Yeah, these are, um, let me see, Illinois, Ohio, Alabama, Georgia. These are all Florida deer here, these other ones. Man, this one is uh, Illinois, too. So That's Yeah, I like, I like the deer. I like to do it all. Turkey yeah. Hunt, turkey hunt's my favorite. If I was going to do anything, it'd be turkey hunt and and then my dog hunting. So I've killed enough deer and done enough deer hunting that I don't worry too much about the deer hunting. But uh, hey, you 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 a man after my own heart, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh. I saw you doing that turkey call with your mouth that one time. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I yeah I've done a lot of lot of hog hunting and that's my go to and and with the turkey hunting also and like you said with the deer hunting you know. I've, you know, I don't. I don't have a lot of major big bucks in, under my belt, but I got you know quite a few deer under my belt. So sure, it's like, sure. if I if I get one, I get one. But yeah, man, uh, cousin of mine got me hooked on the turkeys. Uh, probably about 10, 11 years ago, and ever since then, man, it's just. <laughs> uh, man, I'm telling you, after that first one came in, that was it. I was hooked on that too. That yes, was sir. that was life right there. Yes, sir. <laughs> That season's so short, it makes it like you just can't wait for it to come, and it's over so fast. So then you get back to the dogs, you know, like it, so it's yep. not a big deal. But man, I, that them turkeys, man, they get me going, boy. <laughs> that is my thing. Especially when you hear that drumming going on. Yeah, you know he's close. You know he's killing. You're gonna kill him when she's here. Yeah, as soon yeah. as you hear that drumming, that's right. My you, wife you actually got about her buck first. fever, man. Get that drum fever. <laughs> <laughs> I got my wife. My wife got her first bird this year. Uh, man, she was excited. But I tell you, I could hear that thing. I said, you can't feel like I'm feeling drumming. You know, like, he's got to be close. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, I can feel it. I can feel that bird, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she was dying laughing. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah. Got a nice, she got a nice bird this year, for sure. It's like that breathing gets a little tight. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, there ain't nothing, ain't nothing like it. You know, you know, you know, like how they say when you, when, when you, when you think you should get up, sit your ass down. Ah, oh, man, I know. I, yeah. I, I, mess up, I mess it up all the time. So we were talking <laughs> about that. Me and her were talking about that this year. And she's like, so for now on, when you get that feeling, just sit for 10, 15 more minutes. Just look at the yeah. clock. I was like, yeah, you're right. Cause I'd yeah. be mad to be quiet, quiet. I ain't hearing nothing. I stand up there. He is looking at me. I said, God dog it, man. I thought I just waited five more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to me because. I took my old lady out with me, and uh, we was doing some running and gunning, just just spot and stalk type of stuff. And um, I seen two good ones out there, probably about three hundred yards out in the pasture. <clears throat> so we we drove on down and got to the other side of the cypress head. And I was like, they're headed in this direction, so if they hear me, they might come into us. So that's what we did. We parked. We went around the edge of that cypress head, and um. I was like, we'll go ahead and just set up right here. I, I couldn't see them, but I threw out a call and they, they answered, which surprised me because it was like 9.30, almost 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. And so we went ahead, sat down, and I throw out, you know, a couple calls here and there. And like you said, you, you, I, I hardly don't ever use anything else now. I just use a couple basic calls and, and a lot of times. Mm -hmm. it, and... Um, and that's what I did. I threw out a couple of calls and like I said, they had answered. So we're sitting there waiting and I wait a little bit and then I throw out a couple more and then they both hammer back. So I was like, all right, they're coming. They're interested. Mm -hmm. they're, they're hooked. So we're sitting there, we're sitting there, we're sitting there. You know, I'm just slow down when you're waiting. <laughs> when you wait. <laughs> 30, 30 seconds turns into 30 minutes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So we're sitting there, and I'm like, they should be coming up. They should be coming up. And I'm yeah. sitting there, sitting there, trying to stay quiet, trying not to move. And I don't hear nothing. So I, I throw a couple more calls out, and I don't hear nothing. So I'm sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, listening, listening, listening. I don't hear nothing. So I throw out a couple more calls, and I hear that drumming. Mm. I said, you hear that? She said, what is that? Because she had never heard it. <laughs> 
Yeah. You know, like you said, your your old lady was. She's mm -hmm. like, that's that's turkey chop. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And we're sitting there, we're sitting, we're sitting, we're sitting there listening, they're listening, listening. And they drum a few times, but they never come around. They never come out into the open, nothing. They're sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Man, it seemed like minutes went by. I mean, it was probably three minutes. <laughs> but it seemed like, you know, 10 oh, minutes. 30, yeah, three hours. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, nothing happening. So I throw a call, call out again. You know, just little, you know, just little clucks. And I still hear a couple drums. I'm like, where the hell are they at? So we're behind the cabbage. There's, there's a good sized cabbage that we were sitting on the other side of. So here I go. My impatient ass stands up, looks around the cabbage. Mike, I tell you, they're about 10 feet away from me. Ah, man. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it was close when you heard him drumming. Man, that's. Uh, <laughs> I, I hate that feeling. I hate that feeling. We're saying that goes the whole day, you know, like, yeah, the whole my whole day through. <laughs> Here I am, about eight years, nine years into this, and I pull a rookie move, man. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it. I still do it every now and then. Get tired, tired of waiting, and then I I mess it up, man. Yeah. Sure. But but how I got to the to the cause with my mouth is that, oh, um, you know, I used to do the diaphragms. I, I mean, I still do now and then. Uh, the slates, you know, the box, and um, I might do that for a location, you know, just 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 to get something to work up. But what happened was I had a couple hunts where I had a diaphragm in my mouth, and they get hung up, and I go to try to pull it in with a cluck or something, and next time I just gone. Yeah, you know, it, once it's once once the sound is wrong, that that's it. Yeah. Done yep. Did. yep. I yep. I, you know, I think people can overcall really easy overcall on a bird and scare them off too to get them to yep. come in. They hang up and they just try too hard to get them to break that break up that eighty yard mark. You know, if he's hung out there in a the field, but sometimes you just gotta just just wait him out, man. Really, yeah. Yep. They, they're, they're all smart. Dude. Every one of them birds are different too, though. So it's not like everything works. You gotta you gotta try to study that bird while he's coming. Or, you know, sometimes it happens really quick. You'd be like, man, I can't believe it just happened like that, you know, and then yeah. other times work on him for two days, you know. Yep. There's no there's no cookie cutter situation. No, no, they're all different. They're they're all got yeah, their own personality for sure. Yeah, that, and that and that and that's what got me to to start practicing with my mouth because I, I seen um I seen somebody do it somewhere on a video probably about ten years ago. I seen somebody doing it and after that I just started practicing and it, it took me a while, but now I've gotten to where I can throw some clucks pretty good, you know, right there. Yeah. Hey, you, basic stuff's all you need, man. I, I'm not no professional caller, and I kill a bunch of birds, you know. It just, <laughs> I just do some basic basic stuff just to keep his attention. Get his attention and then keep his attention, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, most of the time, if, unless they're still on the roost in the morning, them hens aren't that talkative and that crazy anyways if you study them birds enough, you know. Mm -hmm. they're, they're pretty quiet, so, Yeah. I've learned to just be more quiet than I do. What, uh, what I've done a lot more of lately in the past, probably three or four years, is that I don't even use a decoy. No, I don't. I don't. In Florida, I don't use one at all because yeah. I've, I've not had any luck with them. I've seen guys make videos and they always want to pull them out. And I, every time I have ever used a decoy in Florida, in the state of Florida, on an Osceola, he is spooked every time. Every yeah. time. Yeah. I, I don't pull one out. I've done it a couple of times, but I've had way more of bad luck than I have than good luck. Me with too. Me too. I sit up in the bushes and throw some clucks out. <laughs> you know, and just yeah, and they'll come creeping in because they want to know where she's at. You yeah. know, yeah, they got a bird. I like them looking for the bird, but, you know, like you said, I've had more bad experiences. And then you have one hang up, and you're like, man, if I'd have just had a decoy, you know, that's in your mind, you know. Yeah. Back <laughs> if I'd have just used that hen decoy, he made a, he might have come, but I've had too many of them spook. I don't like them decoys much. Yeah. Yep. I'm with you on what's, what's the uh, What's the biggest bird you've got, man? Well, it'd have to be that, that one I got that full mount on it, but he uh -huh. was in Kansas, so he was uh, – 
think he was 23 pounds. I mean, that was pretty big for a turkey. Uh -huh. um, then I think them birds are a little bit bigger up that way than an Osceola. I haven't really weighed many of them Osceolas. I got one in the freezer from, uh, not from this past, I didn't kill a bird this year, just her and my kids. Um, I didn't get one myself, but I've got one in there to take that I want to get a full mount on from last year. And I thought he was huge for an Osceola, but I think when we weighed him, he was only 18 pounds. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I, he looked like a pretty good bird. That, that big one I got, uh, I had, I killed one before him. I was in Kansas and we tagged out me and a buddy went out there. We were allowed two birds. We both killed two. The first one I killed was really pretty and he was big, but this one was so much bigger at 23 point something, you know, he's almost 24 pounds. I, man, he was just, he was huge. And the, the guide was, he was like, man, you got to take this one and swap it out. If you're going to get one full mount, yeah. this bird's huge. So that was the biggest, that'd be the biggest bird I killed. What about the, uh, the spurs on them, the hooks? Uh, See, some of these Osceola's got some really good spurs. I've killed a bunch. A bunch of these birds are Easterns that I killed. Uh -huh. His spurs, I don't know if I measured them. I don't know if you can see them up there. They aren't giants. Yeah. Um, but some of these, uh, some of these um, Florida birds, these Osceola's, man, they got giant hooks on them. Let me see. Yeah. And uh, let me see, I had a couple. I got another one that's got some real big daggers. Or real nice looking daggers. I don't know if you can see him or not. Yeah, I can see it. But they're uh, so some of these Osceolas have good have good spurs, and then the Easterns in Georgia from walking from walking in that clay. I don't know if I've got a short one to look at. They get stubby. They like that that sand walking in them in them sand fields wear them down. So oh okay, um, they don't. They, the bird may be big, the easterns may be huge, and but those birds on them them clay them clay fields in Georgia, they're just they get big around, but they're stubby. They're not real long. Yeah. They're not real long hooks. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that. <clears throat> yeah, the sand wears them down for whatever reason. Man, my my uh my dream turkey is a uh, uh well. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm talking about dream turkeys, but my 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 dream hunt turkey would be uh, one of those oscillated ones. Man, I know we got to go to Mexico for that, man. Yeah, yep. I I want to go really bad too. They got way too much stuff going on in Mexico right now. I just right. I, talk, I got I got I just a uh, girl from Home Depot that I know just came back from there, and I mean she had like a bunch of news articles and stuff. So it's not safe to go down there right now, but one of these days, if they can ever get that stuff straightened out, I would love to go and get me one yes. of those birds, man. Yes. Is, what a cool looking bird, man. Yeah, man. Those are some pretty birds right there, man. Some pretty birds. I was telling a buddy of mine the other day, I said, I ever get one of them, I said, I will pay for a full mount on that one. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm working on that. That's why I got these. So this one's a, I think it was a Miriam. And I'm I'm gonna get that off that's that I'll see all the mounted so I have two of them and I still need a I'll have to get an eastern I don't ha I've killed a bunch but I don't have an eastern mounted I'm gonna get I'm gonna get it where I have a display with my grand slam so I'll have all four yeah. of them and a full yeah. mount and nice. then uh, I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to go down there or not but I'd really like to go for when I'm oscillated yeah man them them, them things them th pretty man yep. <laughs> reason, reason why I was laughing when I said dream turkey was that uh, uh friend of mine. Uh, I had a dream about a turkey one night. It's crazy, man. Uh, and I woke up kind of mad too, man. <laughs> and I was like, man, I was like, I know that ain't gonna happen. But what happened was in, in the dream was that my friend, uh, his name is Corey, that he shot this uh seven bearded tom that I that I dreamed about. <laughs> I woke up and I had a grudge with him, man. <laughs> uh, dang, I seen I seen one shot this year, a picture of one that uh, I don't remember how many beards were on there, five or six or so. It was just a picture, I think, in Georgia. But uh, yeah. I killed I killed a couple that were double beard, but um, nice. Nothing like like you see with the I've seen them with four or five or six beards, you know, just in pictures. I think yeah. that would that would be really cool. That would be yeah. really. cool. I'd have to get that one mounted, you know. I had told my friend about that, about that dream. And then uh, not long after that, maybe maybe like a year later or something, like that, he sends me an article. A, a guy actually did shoot a seven-bearded Oh, thumb. yeah. Yep. Crazy, man. Yeah. You, you'd never think it would get that high. I mean, yeah, four or five, yeah. I, th I, think, the, I think I've seen a picture of one with like 11. So, 
Between really? Five, yeah, but John, I've seen several that had like five or six, so seven, yeah. seven's a high number, but I have seen one that had like 11, 11 beers. That was, you know, they start getting like little strands, but yeah. I mean, each, one of, each one of them's in a different spot. If you look, like when they lay them down sideways, you can see that they're not connected. I mean, they're, yeah. Yeah. you know, quarter inch or half inch in between each little, um, you know, stub out. So yeah. uh, you can tell. So then they, they counted them as that, even if it was only just one or two strands sticking out. So yeah. I mean, that's cool. I've seen some hens with some. Have you ever seen a hen with a beard? Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. seen a beard. I've seen, a, I've seen a hen or two with one. One was like, it was super skinny. Only looked like it had two hairs, but it was like dragging the ground, man. I was like, God dang, I almost tried. <laughs> I wanted that thing. I was going to her too. But, you know, they ain't supposed to shoot them hens. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that um, the bearded hen that I seen, it, it it had a good decent beard. I mean, not not super thick or anything like that, yeah. but you could see it was a hen beard. Look crazy. <clears throat> what's the um? Uh, what was I gonna say? What, what's what's like the uh, craziest uh turkey 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 hunt mm -hmm. you got? What's that? What's what's the craziest turkey hunt you got, man? Oh shoot, man. Um. Crazy turkey hunt. Let me think about that. We've had some really fast ones. You get out there, hit the call, they're running to you. I think of the craziest one. Great. I mean, I don't know that I've had too many crazy. Now, I did shoot one one time, and I had to run out there and step on him, and it went to flopping around. He hit me right in the eye with his wing. Oh, I, shit. I don't, I don't think I could see that. Like, you know, he was flapping around, and that feather had stroked me just right across the eyeball with my eye open. I couldn't see for like three hours, man. Mm. Um, that thing was just like it was so dry, like that dry ass feather hitting me. It's just that thing tore me up. I haven't had no real crazy. Now, my brother has some really wild. My brother has some really crazy stuff happen to him all the time. I, at one time he was dead, tying his shoe, had hit the call and the bird got way down there. And the next thing he knows, he was that thing had run up on him before he could sit down. Uh, he had to shoot it. He shot one down here in Florida same thing it was in the tree him and his dude was calling a bird almost landed right on his head he shot him and it he shot him blew the beard off the bird and couldn't find it blew the beard clean off of his chest he couldn't find any part of it to, to put back on the beard so it ruined that um, but i haven't had you know as far as craziness the only crazy like anything crazy would be the coyotes coming in on the coming in when you're calling or seeing a decoy i, I have shot a couple coyotes oh while. okay while calling a bird, but nothing real crazy with a turkey, you know, itself. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, uh, <laughs> I've, I've had, I've had a, a couple crazy ones. Uh, one of them, uh, me and, uh, two of my friends, we went out. I had, I had spotted them out the night before or the day before. And, um, I kind of figured we was going to be in a good spot where we, where we went in at. And we're set up, we're calling. And, uh, turns out, man, they're Hey, on the other side of the pasture, <laughs> always three, four hundred yards out, you know, and it's like, you know, maybe we can get one of them, you know, maybe we get them across. But anyway, here we are throwing some, you know, through pra through practically everything at them, man. Kitchen sink and all, man. And we're sitting there waiting, see if they might ever get interested coming to us. But he's got like, I don't know, like 12 hens on him, so he ain't pulling off of them, you know. We're just hoping that the hands might come our way. And uh, I turned to look to tell my friend because my friends were on my right side. I turned to look and I was going to tell them, you know, let's, 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 let's this, uh, this fence line because it, it, those, those uh, trees before the fence and then there's the tree line and there's a road next to the fence. So I was like, let's, I was getting ready to tell them, let's hit this fence line and, and, and run down there. So as I turn and I look, about six, seven feet from my uh, second friend, which he was the furthest one out from me. He's probably 10 feet out from me, about six, seven feet on the other side of him. There's a damn gobbler that's standing there looking at us. Never made a sound. Yeah, damn. Silent treatment. <laughs> Nuck in. Nuck in on you, man. Never made a sound, man. Never. Never. Never made a sound. Needless to say, we didn't get them, but man, that that was crazy, man. It just turned to happen and look, and there he was. <laughs> I got a, I got a chance to hunt with a dude named Eddie Salters. He's got a TV show. He's uh -huh. called, called him Turkey Man, 
Um, so my buddy had a couple of spots that somehow or another he had, he had got in touch with a guy and was going to let him come down and kill an Osceola. So anyways, we were going to go down and meet him. Um, well, he was running late. So I went in the Grove. I went ahead in, in the Grove and I killed a bird like right, right off the roof, landed. He ran right down there. I shot him. Uh, and then those guys were texting. They're like, man, he's coming close. Well, this Grove's got a bunch of birds in it. I heard quite a few. So I, this goes back to the decoy thing too. So he comes and he's like, man, you know, where'd you hit, you know, you already shot the bird. I'm like, yeah, man, you're, you know, two hours late. It's already like fucking eight, th eight 30 in the morning now, nine o'clock. Uh, I said, but there's birds here. I mean, you know, if, if he's a TV show guy, but yeah. those, those guys want, he's has all these calls. He makes his own calls. He's a big, big time dude. Um, so we went in the back, he had a call, two birds answered. He goes to start setting up and I was going to just crawl in the bushes down, down behind him and just watch. Uh, but, you know, they got the TV camera. He's got his girl with him that's going to do the shooting, and he was going to do the calling. And uh, they start putting the decoys out. I said, I don't know if I'd do that. Well, you know, it makes for better TV, you know, to have to have them come in. I'm like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. He's working out. He's working one. And, I mean, this bird's coming right off the bat, coming to him. Man, this sounds great. This is going to be perfect for him, right? And I, the, yeah, I can't see around the ditch. The, there's a dit like a head in the middle of the grove, so the ditch goes around. Anyways, the bird's coming down. I was hiding in the bushes down there behind him. I didn't want to get too close. The bird comes up, and I can hear him gobbling, and I can hear him answering him. He got where he could see that decoy, and he shut up. Mm -hmm. And I do kept trying. I kept calling. He'd wait a little bit. He'd call again. He finally got up and come over there, and he's like, what do you think? I said, man, he's seen the decoy. Or, I mean, the decoy spooked him. Right, what do you know? I was like, I'm just telling you, these birds here are a little different. You know, some of these, some of these birds... These are real wild Osceolas. They're not like on a ranch where somebody's got feeders and stuff. I don't know what it is about some of these Osceolas, but they don't like a decoy. Yeah. So I said, I said, before you got here, we drove by a little grove right down the street that we have permission to, too. And I seen three strutters with like two or three hens. So I said, let's drive down there. So we drive down. He, you can see them from the road on that part of the grove. So we pull through. He hits the call. They gobble. I said, there they go. So I hung back. I went down the fence line and sat, but they're up there. And this, this, this grove was kind of like an older grove. So the trees were, um, tall, but underneath them, it was like the, like the branches are way up high too. Like you could see, if you got down on your hands and knees, you could see for a pretty good distance. Yeah. The birds, they, they were pretty far from us, but he had already hit the call and they had answered. So I think they were coming. He's out there messing around moving some branches and setting these decoys up i'm like what's he doing you know like he would sit down already you know uh, and he starts calling and it's nothing like nothing's going on he gets up and he walks back there to where i'm at he goes what do you think i said they seen you no there's no way i said i said look under these trees dude i mean they can see 100 yards under here them birds saw you moving around he's like, where do you think they're at i said they're clear over there you know getting out the other side of the grove he's like no way so we get in the car we drive or the truck we drive around there there they are, leaving the grove out of the corner. I said, I told you, man, they saw you. So he drove a long ways and didn't get to kill a bird. He came from Texas. Wow. I, they went, we went, went, ate lunch, and uh, that chick was with him, worked for uh, Hunter Specialties. Yeah. Uh, so she had somebody else, another contact. I think they went down uh, Okeechobee somewhere on a nice ranch instead of a grove, and they ended up getting one the next day on video with a decoy and all. But when he went with us, he didn't. He, he ended up giving me a nice call, though. I've killed a bunch of birds with that call. I really liked that call. So he was cool to meet. It was really cool to have pictures with him, and I got to shake his hand. And, I mean, this was a guy from TV and, you know, all that. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. But, you know, they wanted to they wanted to do their thing. And sometimes you just, you know, some birds are just different. These birds down yeah. here don't they don't like a decoy, man. Yeah. It, it, it was a little too much when he tried to get the theatrics yeah. in there. That's what it was. Yeah. And then, man, he had already... He already struck that bird, and he, they were over there fondling around and trying to set up, you know, the decoys and make the whole set over there, break some branches down where they could sit underneath the orange tree. I'm like, man, you know, these, these guys are messing up real bad. Sure enough, them birds was, <laughs> them birds was out of here, man. I put them right on them, though, so it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like he could say I didn't have no birds. I mean, I put him right on some gobbler yeah. bird, so that was, that was on them. Man, I mean, you see it all the time. People... People hold their Osceola in the high regards as being a real smart, tricky bird. And, and some people just don't, they just don't understand it because they haven't had to deal with it, you know? Yeah, that's right. And, and me, um, I would have to say it's the other way around because I've never hunted anything else but an Osceola. Yeah. 
Yeah. All I've ever hunted. And I would say that I got pretty good success, success rate on it. So it's like, to me, this, this is my normal, but I guess if I went somewhere else and messed with a different species, I'll probably have a higher success rate and I'll be like, Oh, okay. That's what they're talking about. You know, but, you know, Rake Straw and them were trying, them guys from Georgia were trying to do a grand slam all in one year this year. So them guys went all over. They came here first, got an Osceola, you know, they, they, they always, strike pretty good there in Georgia where they're from. They them guys can turkey up pretty good. And then they went out to um where'd he go? I don't he didn't go to Kansas. He went to Arkansas and Texas. But that dude came from Texas. You know, and I, I seen a video of Rick showing them in Texas or just driving on the back of them, you know, in Texas they got them trucks with the seats on the back where they drive up and down them yeah. arrow roads. And they're just driving. There goes some birds crossing the road. He just hits the call right there. They all stop, four gobblers, they walk back to the truck and this you know they're on the seat just with his mouth clucking at him like you do man he's got them strutting and messing around they could have killed out right there i mean those those birds in texas uh, them rios uh, they seem they seem like they would be really easy to kill yeah and maybe that's what he was thinking it was you know but these osceolas man they see you moving you can forget it dude you can yeah 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 them, yeah. them, them suckers, they see you 150 yards out they see you twitch wrong that's it oh man. yeah they gone they ain't coming back dude. Uh-uh. I'd rather spook them. I'd rather drive up on them and scare them into the woods with a truck, and then then sit and wait, than to see them walk. See, let them see you walking. They see a human walking. That's it. This game yeah. over. Yeah. You ain't, you ain't getting that bird. That hunt is over with. <laughs> Pack it up. <laughs> Stick a fork in the day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. The um. The dogs that you were saying that you you run, um, you said you had them most of your life, or most yeah. of your your hunting hunting career. Yeah, between between the group of us, yeah, between yeah, us, and back and forth peddling them dogs around um, for quite some time. They're just mixed stuff though. The you know I don't have any like you no know, purebred type stuff other than these pit bulls for catching. Uh, yeah. For, um, yeah. That, that's uh, what I. So I was gonna ask you: Are are they like a gritty? They they catch or? Oh you, yeah, yeah. I, oh. I I almost gave this this catch dog I got away the other day because I'm starting to feel bad about him sitting in the pen. I don't hardly use him. I mean, <laughs> I, I got two of these two of these dogs together. I mean, they pretty much catch just about anything you want. Yeah. And every every one of the guys that I hunt with, if we're going like, unless we go to like a big place where I can take a bay dog, you know. Or, or in ride with somebody else's bay dogs, then I don't really need the cat. If we go walking in a grove or a small place, or if I go with like a uh, big dog to the grove down there, all them hogs run so bad, you don't want to put anything on there that's not going to bite. They got to catch when they get there, or you're going to lose the hog most of the yeah. time. Nine times out of ten, you're going to lose the hog. So yeah. these are pretty gritty, and, not, and the guys I hunt with all have relatives or similar dogs. They're all, and so if you got two or three dogs on the ground, there's you're catching just about anything you want. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you'd have to be one really, really bad one and really wreck one or two of them dogs before you got there if you were going to miss the hog over that. Yeah. So I, I don't really necessarily need a catch dog most of the time unless I'm going to a particular place that I'm going to take one of these, you know, yellow dogs that are going to be a bay dog or something, you know. So so what you got is almost like almost like a running catch dog. Is, is yeah, what... yeah, they're pretty rough, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then I hear um, I I hear some people say like what you're saying because they run so much that you got to have that type of dog, something that's gonna hit, you know, especially something that's got uh help. Yeah, like two three dogs get there and then you want them to hit it because you know that they run so much. Then you hear some people say, oh, if you got a dog that a you know that a loose loose bay it, it'll hold it until you get there. And, and it's like that may work where you're at. But yeah. if you haven't proven that over here where I'm at, don't give me your ass from over there. And you know, <laughs> everywhere's the, a little different. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. Or, or or in the other part of the state, you know, where where the hogs are different. You know, yeah, for sure, for sure. And, I, and then of course you get in that cane, and some of them blocks are so nasty and thick, you don't want something to go out there and just gonna catch in the middle of that block either. By the time yeah. you get, is it gonna overheat or be? Like yeah. the pieces. So depends yeah. on where you're going to. You got to kind of read read the area and read the hogs too. So um, yeah. 
you know, I like to be able to go more than once. If I'm going to a new spot, I'm hoping I'm going to get invited back. So, cause if the dog, if one set of dogs don't work good, I'm going to bring a different set next time and see if we can do something a little different. Yeah. Um, I do have a, I do have a red uh, bobtail jip out there. Who's a most, mostly bay. I mean, she'd catch a smaller hog, but mostly bay on a big hog or over anything over 125 pounds or so. She's probably going to bay, but she bays different than like one of these yellow dogs. I mean, she's a tight, rough, not going to let him spin. And I got, you know, some that are good to go to a ranch that are bay dogs, but not necessarily super rough. If the hog want, likes to break or wants to break, he's going to get away from her. He's going to, you know, so I don't, I don't, the stuff I have, I wouldn't compare to the old stuff I used to have. I just, you know, I, I've had a real hard time trying to get something that's really good. Some of these out there are decent dogs, you know, yeah. uh, I catch, catch hogs, but nothing like what I, I I've had much better. For sure. you, you mentioned, you mentioned earlier about like the, uh, like the quality of dogs today compared to what it was back then. And that's something that I tell, I tell my buddies or, or whoever I might be hunting with, like, like, uh, you know, my, my stepsons and, and, or even my own boys, when they, when they come down, they get a chance to go with me and stuff like that. You know, I, I, I tell them that back then, like, like I mentioned earlier, I, I didn't have, you know, the knowledge I got today about dogs or, or how to care for a dog or how to, you know, work a dog and this and that. And back then, whether it was the Heinz 57 that we had just got from somebody, somebody gave us a, you know, a dog that they had or, or whatever it was, or sometimes we found a dog on the side of the road, and took it and see if it worked, you know? Uh, plenty of that. Yeah. 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 And what I noticed, the biggest thing that I noticed a difference in for, for me is that the dogs that we had back then and, and no lie, we would drop the tailgate and them suckers would run eight hours a night. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would run eight hours a night. Yep. Not just one or two hours, switch them out with the next crew for one or two hours and switch them back out. Another hour or two with the, you know, that switching back and forth. No, it, it was, you drop the tailgate. <laughs> they, they worked for eight hours because we yeah. would run hours at night, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's crazy because down here, back then, it would get so flooded that the dogs would damn near be swimming most of the time, too. And they would still just be yeah. out there, head up, hunting. And we were feeding them old roar. You know? <laughs> yeah, Walmart brand. Yeah, I was, I'm with you. Yeah. Feeding, them, feeding them old roar. Um, once in a while, we could probably afford a bottle of Red Cell, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then uh, um, Ivermec, you know? Yeah. Ivermec and penicillin, that was it, you know? Yeah. And, and it's like, today, it's hard to find a dog that'll run, you know, three or four hours if it ain't got no hound in it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easy to be lame, they're sore don't want to run can't eat this mm -hmm. got allergies you know skin condition like man where's all this bad blood coming from you know yeah. like, geez i don't know yeah it, it, it's uh you, you can't spend 20 bucks for a 50 pound bag no more now you have to pay <laughs> bucks for a 20 pound bag you know? make, uh, you, yeah. <laughs> even the cheap stuff expensive yeah 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 well i mean i even see old roy stepping it up now too now you know they got like a 35 dollar uh 24, 25 pound bag or something like that. I don't know. I ain't, I ain't been in Walmart in a while. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Taking the guns and stuff out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's man, it's it's a shame the way it's going, man. And then that's that's like one of the things. I mean, like I said, you know, I try not to get too political, but I mean, I I do, I do get the, onto the top of like. Uh, we got to stick together. You know what I mean? Like no matter what kind of hunter we are, you know, yep. I mean, whether, whether we agree with the next guy's practice or not, I mean, still at the end of the day, they're hunting, we're hunting, however it is, you, you, you hunt your way, I hunt my way. And even if it's the, uh, even if it's the, uh, the extermination end of the spectrum as to like over in Texas where they got the helicopters, you know, shooting yep. out of this and that they have that big of a problem where they have to do that, you know? And we don't have that necessarily have that problem like that here, not yet here in Florida, 
I think there's less homes than there used to be, honestly. But I could be wrong. But it's like it's like everybody gets to to the point of like, oh, you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to do it this way. And if you don't, you know, if you don't catch in time, you you know, you're you you know, you're a girl or whatever the hell yeah, they want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. guys get mad. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, so meanwhile, while that's going on, all this back and forth, bickering and pointing and stuff, the guys that can really make the decisions and really make stuff happen are making decisions, sitting in the big seat, in Tallahassee. You know, that's why we're fighting with each other. Yeah, exactly, yep. exactly, exactly. Why we're sitting over here pointing at each other about who about who's doing it wrong. That's right. Yeah, I I, I can't get with that, man. I mean, yeah, we all- gotta have a little bit of. Uh, competitiveness you know you know hey we're men you know <laughs> yeah, yeah you know we jab at each other we rib each other you know but you know at the end of the day you know we got to stick together a lot yeah more we need to stick together and take it out on the politicians for sure yes, yeah. yes sir that's exactly it because a lot of those guys are so uh uh what is it uh uh what's the term i'm looking for they're they're so uh uh they're, they're they're not in touch with with the people like no. we are. Yeah, no, yeah. they're straight city folk. They don't understand anything we're doing, and it ain't just mm-hmm. the guns they want to get rid of. They want to get rid of the dogs too. They yeah. don't want you hunting. Period. Yeah, uh, yeah. They're looking yeah. for whatever way they can get rid of all of it. Yeah. And those and those organizations gain a lot of traction every year while we're still sitting over here bickering about a fifteen dollar snap or something. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. They, it, it, way you won't be able to fish either they'll be taking once they get rid of the hunting they'll go after the fishermen of course yep. of course the, them extremists are out there that, that 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 believe that nobody should own a dog nobody should own a hamster you know and that's 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 what people don't understand people that might have these hamsters and stuff like that and looking at the person that owns the dog and saying oh you're mistreating the dog this and that well there's somebody else looking at you yeah you're mistreating yeah you, you got know? him in age too you know what i'm saying yeah. you got- Stuff, you know, yeah. you, know you can't exercise him other than running a wheel. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Or you let him loose in the house and then he's gone for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Up in a mattress. Oh, yeah, man. I've done a bunch of that. Turned them damn mice loose in the garage and all. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's it's like, you know, they, they, I see sometimes there's, there's, there's like a, notices that go out on some of these different uh facebook pages and stuff like that people people need to get involved huh? people need to get involved because they're like oh that won't happen to us or or my grandpa's on this you know fifteen thousand acre ranch since you know since he was a kid and we we're, yeah, we're always I, hunt here that yeah. I, that's what i've seen the most of is the families falling apart i all wanted to get these kids into the college and do something better well who's going to work the land if you don't teach them to appreciate the land, as soon as they go to college, they want money and they don't ever want to come back. As soon yeah. as you die, they're selling off. It. That's what's happening to every ranch and every yeah. every big every big piece of parcel of land is getting yeah. chopped up, chopped up for dollar bills. The family yeah. doesn't family doesn't have any consideration as to what they're you know they have no idea once this once it's gone it's gone brother you can't you can't yeah. make the land anymore man. <laughs> Boom, and that goes there. All you're hunting, all you're fishing. <laughs> God ain't making any more land. No, it ain't coming. Nope. No. And 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 I and I just made a comment like that. Um, I believe yesterday on somebody's post on Facebook, they made they made a uh, they made a post about some property that's being turned into a suburb. And I was like, you know what? That ain't going to end anytime soon because these ranchers are getting tired. These farmers are getting tired. Yep. It offered a, a a deal that they just can't pass up because they could live out the rest of their life on it. Well, you they got to retire at some point, and then yeah. you know, nobody wants it. Their kids don't want yeah. it. Their grandkids don't want it. Nobody yeah. wants to work it. Who wants yeah. to still work cows and stuff? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they, they're all spoiled, man. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it, because those big families didn't pass it down. That's and right. then when they get out there, they're like, I don't want to go mess with these cows, nah. you know, every day of my life, because that's an everyday job. Yeah. Everyday job, that's an all-day job. And sometimes you get a phone call at nighttime because your cow got out the gate or got out the fence. Uh, yeah. Get up get up and go to work in the middle yeah. of the night. Yeah. And, and, and it's a die that's a that's a dying thing too, just like the hunting is gonna be the ranch and that's a before long it'll all be concrete and we'll all be out of yeah. be out of the thing that we want. Yeah. And then we'll be starving because there's gonna be nobody to there's no cows, no food, no farm, yeah. no nothing. 
And, and that's 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 exactly why I say that we do have to start sticking together, no matter no matter what type of hunting it is that you do, you know. Whether you're deer hunter, squirrel hunter, raccoon hunter, hog hunter, and then it doesn't matter what kind of hog hunting you do, you know. You stick them with a gun. I mean, stick them with a knife or shoot them with a gun. Catch them with the dogs. Tie them. Whatever. Yep. Whatever you do. Yep. Trapping them. We got to stick together one way or another, man. Because it, it's coming. It's coming, but it's up to us to to slow it down, you know. I know, man. Well, what what kind of lease was it that you was on? Oh, that, that, was you... a, that was a lights lease there, and that uh, they call that the dark dark marsh or something like that. So you go down there by Brighton in the Northport area, right there off the lake, off of. Oh, okay. Uh, and there's several leases there. So lights has got so much property down there; they they break it up in different things. So yeah, that would have been the closest lease I had down there towards y'all you know and, and that's a two hours two hour ride for you right yeah that was two yeah two man i would tell you what that thing that lease was so far in the woods that you know it takes me almost almost two hours to get to that gate so i get down there by that uh what's that a loves i think that was a loves truck stop right there before you get into um not clueston but uh moorhaven yeah uh, on 27 there so you turn there by the prison go down there northport go in the woods, you get to that gate. Once I open that main gate, I got to drive through a couple of leases. It was another 30 minutes from there. So it'd take me two hours to get there. And then it'd take me 30 minutes to get down to, to my gate through the, on wow. the river. it was a little hot. It was a little hike to get back there. No power, no water back there. Uh, so you had to run a generator if you were going to stay, you know, Yeah. Um, but it was pretty nice. I mean, we had 55 or 6,500 acres there. It was a pretty, pretty nice lease. Okay. Caught quite a few hogs there. We had a good time. We were there, uh, two years, I think, or so, and um, and we were going to try to get on another lease. And when we, as we were doing that, the guy filled our spots, and then that thing fell apart. I couldn't get back on there. We ended up a year without a lease. Last year, I got on with Robbie um, right on twenty seven. There, they call that one uh, um, uh, hail pen. This so it was right on twenty seven was the gate, and it's right there. Uh, on Fish Eaton Creek, right there by the park and stuff, right there. That okay. was fourteen thousand acres. Uh, it was a nice. big place. Nice. Um, we caught quite a few hogs there, but he didn't. He didn't want to join. I didn't have the money to do it this year, so we didn't. Um, I don't have a lease this year. So those 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 spots you had to uh, you share with like uh like deer hunters and stuff like that too. Yeah, yeah. So I think he had. Um, there was only nine of us on that 6,500 acres and, and it was so far out there them guys hardly ever showed up and some of them were deer hunter it was only like two other hog hunters and um man I hardly ever I hardly ever saw them like I had that place that was pretty nice I had that place to myself now this other one had uh a few hog hunters on it it was but there was 20 members on that 14,000 acres that's a big place yeah uh, but most of those guys were deer hunters there may have been four guys that would hog hunt you know from time to time but it just seems like everywhere i go i'm the i hunt the most as far as the, the hog hunting goes because if i've got a place to go i'm gonna go as much as i can yeah yeah, especially, yeah. especially if i got i got the key to it and i got feeders and stuff up i'm gonna go as much as i can i love i love it man i go yeah. i go more than more than most so yeah you ain't wrong you ain't wrong no. I, was, I was asking because it seems like more and more too the other thing is like you can't find uh, leases where you can run dogs anymore. Uh, hardly. I know that's really hard. So like still let you on some of them. You just have, it just depends on the, like the lease manager, you know, the guy that actually picks it up. Yeah. Um, so likes will allow dogs still where some of them other places don't. Uh, yeah. You're right about that. So there's plenty of places you can lease, but not very many that are going to be dog friendly. Um, and that's mostly because of the deer hunters themselves or, uh, or the cows, you know, the cowboys or, you know, the guys that are leasing the cows, they, you know, if there's a, if there's ever an issue with the dogs that just, for whatever reason, they hate a hog, most of the cowboys, but they don't want you in their hog hunting. They do not want a dog on a calf or a cow. Yeah. Uh, so that'll, that'll stop the hog hunting with dogs immediately. And that, and, that, and that's another thing too that falls on that, that, that's another thing too that falls on the hunter, like, like us hog hunters, you know, train your dogs. That's right. Train. You know, yeah, I know. I know a lot of people now, don't. 
Yeah, now they got these shock collars on the GPS, so you can watch them. I mean, you got a young dog, you got a, but I, you can have dogs. I've seen, you know, nice group of dogs never mess with a hog. You get one guy to bring a dog yep. or a young puppy, yeah, and it and it goes after the cows, and bam, then yep. you have a bad, you have a bad situation right off the bat. One dog will get the whole pack going, even if they've never mm-hmm. barked or looked at a hog. Yep. But, yeah, but that's—I mean, you gotta—you gotta be on top of that if you're gonna be around them cows, because those guys take that very serious. And, and you don't invite that guy back that owned that dog. Nah, nah. He, <laughs> well, you may not get back. I mean, you, that might be your last <laughs> trip too. If somebody sees it, you know, you're done. I've—I've I've been places, and them guys tell you if that dog smells the dog, you'll never come back, or the cow, you'll never come back. So you gotta bring—you gotta bring them aces with all them real experienced dogs do not bring something that you even think might remotely look wrong out of even a yes, cat you know yes sir yes sir yeah. and, and some, people, some people are kind of hesitant with that shock button you know it's no <laughs> you better now, do it if he's chasing that cow you best get on him boy yeah. yep yep i'd rather i'd rather nip that dog in the ass instead of having to pay a five thousand dollar bill yeah. you know yep and then never be invited back again yeah yeah yep, yep. I'd rather pay and be invited back if the place was good. <laughs> pay, the, pay the man for the cow, you know. Just invite right. me back. But now you're gone. If that dog gets on them cows, you ain't coming back. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, Mike. Uh, we, we're right. pushing um, probably about a about an hour and a half here, so I'm, I'd like to go ahead and and shut it on down. But uh, All right, brother, an opportunity, you know, a, a minute to. Uh, Go ahead, give a little plug in on, on your business, man. I know you got a little business going on over there. So oh, yeah. Just... Yeah. I actually got two. So I have a plumbing business, On Deck Plumbing here in Lakeland. And, okay. Uh, on Deck Restoration. So I have a restoration company, too, that does dry out. So kind of like the serve Pro type stuff with insurance work, water, and fire damage and all. Um, okay. And the plumbing company, we do mostly uh, repairs and service. I do a little bit of new stuff here and there, but I like the, I like the repair stuff. So, um, <laughs> Polk County area, so I can we're we're close enough here to Plant City and in South Tampa and stuff that we can go over that way too. But uh, we're long, you know, long ways from where you're at. But if anybody's listening, and they're close by, man, I'm your man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this 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 podcast will be nationwide or even international because it goes on YouTube too. So you know, anybody cool. that they they'll, they'll hear it. You got a phone number for your business? Yep, eight, uh, plumbing line eight six eight six three six four zero nineteen twenty two. Uh, and that'll get you. I can get get a hold of the restoration guys or whatever from that number. Yep, it's a good deal. And, and I and I, uh, I I seen your post the other day where you was a you had to tear up a bedroom floor to get to a pipe or something. Oh man, that was a septic tank. Somebody that- built it. Yeah, somebody <laughs> built it. we run in, we run into five or six of them a year where they somebody's built an addition or done something over uh-huh. the septic, and uh, those guys had a dig a big old cutout in the concrete so i had to pick that slab up. they knew the tank was there so they've been pumping that tank like that so yeah but uh she's having problems with the toilets and we happened to call us over there uh yeah i had to open that lid so the concrete i had to open the concrete then dig down to the tank and then open the septic tank in the bedroom <laughs> yeah in the bedroom yep yeah nasty <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking. Nobody ever checks that sometimes. If they don't pull permits and all, they just build these bedrooms right over the right over their septic tank. Sure enough, boy. Yeah. Damn it, man. I know. I opened that thing up and roaches come out of everywhere. They were running all in their bed and there. I was like, oh my God, man. <laughs> all in the house. That's that. I know a guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy for that too. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, well, Mike, man, it's been a pleasure having you here on our podcast this evening, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, glad y'all, glad y'all had me. Yes, sir, man. It is a pleasure, and uh, maybe we do it again sometime, man. All right, bro. All right, man. I'm gonna give a little, uh, little uh, close out here. <clears throat> um, like I said before, we got uh, our sponsors, TBC, thebestcamo.com. You can hit them up, get some shirts made, uh, personalized shirts, also. And then we got Big Country Hunting Supply. He's a hound, a hound dog hunting dog supply guy. Uh, Hog Hunters Association and Straight Catch, which are Facebook pages. You're going to check them out. And um, once again, that's Mike Ashmead out of Lakeland, Florida, fellow hog hunter. Appreciate you giving us a, a bit of your evening tonight and telling some good hog stories and uh, giving us a few pointers on what you got, man. No problem, bro. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
All right. Woo! Caught on. Right. There it is. Podcast. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Later. Yeah, man. That's a good one, man. I appreciate right, well, it. Thank yeah, you, bro. Man. Yeah, man.